Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, you may be seated. While you're being seated, everybody say, Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a miracle worker. Now, the more you say that, the more you get to believe in it. Now, when you get to believe in it, the more you say it, you better make some notes that I'm talking to you tonight. Uh, the more you say it in your own house, or if you need a miracle, the more you say it, the more of the atmosphere comes in for miracles. The Lord imparted to me here a while back. He said, son, I, I, the reason I don't do any more in churches than what I do are in individual lives than what I do. They don't create the right kind of atmosphere for me to work in. He said, I work in atmospheres. If you want to see me do something, then create the right kind of atmosphere for that, and I'll come in the midst of you. But you've got to create the right kind of atmosphere. Well, now, what does that mean? Well, God gave his son for the whole world, and the Lord paid the price. The Lord Jesus paid the price on the cross for your salvation, took the stripes on his back for your healing, and he is a miracle worker. You read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll find out that the Lord Jesus Christ is a miracle worker. He's a savior, and he's a healer. All you, have to do, all you have to do is to get one of your relatives saved is continually call his name, walk the floor, and call Jesus is my husband's Savior. Jesus is my husband's Savior. Jesus is my son's Savior. Jesus is my healer. And you do it over and over and over again, and you do it over and over again, and over and over again, and when you do that, see, when you do that, see, understand this. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ is everything. But you say, well, it don't do everything for me. Uh, that's your fault, not his. The Lord Jesus Christ only does for you what you call him. The whole system is already set up by God. In heaven, there is no diseases. There is no sickness. There's no cripples and there's no heartaches. There's no twisted lives. There's no homosexuals and no dope addicts and no drunks. And the only reason that those kind of people live on earth is because their minds have been twisted. And they've fed the wrong kind of stuff to their flesh. Now then, just the last few weeks and few months, <clears throat> doctors are beginning to uh, figure out the reason many, many people die with cancer is because of their diet. This is a real recent thing. Some health consultants have known that for years that certain types of food or wrong kinds of food together in your body will create cancer cells. Well, if you don't ever call Jesus anything, you're, all you, you're left in a world full of demons. All kinds of demons to make you drunks, dope addicts, homosexuals, cancer patients, lupus patients, Hospital is full of people. As far as I know, all the mental institutions in America are full. I'm sitting in Kenneth Hagin's living room here a while back. When I go to Tulsa, I stay with him all the time. And I'm sitting in his living room here a while back, and he says, Brother Norval, do you know about the last survey in penitentiaries? I know that you've worked in penitentiaries a lot in your life, in state penitentiaries and federal penitentiaries. Do you know what the, the last survey they took in penitentiaries here a while back? And I says, no. He said, they, he said, they took a survey on death row in every penitentiary in America on death row. Every prisoner on death row, they went and talked to them 
and interviewed them. And every prisoner on death row, not part of them, not 99% of them, every prisoner on death row uh, was abused when they were little kids. That kind of atmosphere. That kind of atmosphere. If you abuse a child and you create that kind of atmosphere in their mind, that's what they'll live in. And it's your fault. It's your fault because you created that kind of atmosphere in them. It's a kind of a spirit you created around them. But if you love a little child all the time, and I make it mine, that's fine, but love a little child all the time, see, it'll have a loving spirit. It won't ever be on death row because it'll have a loving spirit, see. Spirits are transferred from one person to another person. That is, the Lord says to raise them up in the way they should go, and, and they will not depart when they get old, <clears throat> and they won't. But if you don't raise them up that way, because everything works in atmospheres, blessed be the name of the Lord. And if you want the Lord Jesus Christ to heal you, all you have to do is <clears throat> you have to call him your healer. The way you create that kind of atmosphere for the Lord to work in, you call Jesus what you want him to be, and he becomes that. Now, he's already that. I want you to get that straight. Jesus has paid the price for everything. Not part of the things, everything Jesus has paid the price for. <clears throat> he says, all things are possible to him that believeth. Remember when I was here seven years ago in that revival of six or seven nights? Remember we started a prayer meeting here, you know, five o'clock in the morning? Remember that? Right here in this sanctuary right here, sometimes we'd have... 2,000 people at prayer meeting at 5 o'clock in the morning. You remember that? Remember, remember several mornings me and Bob would come together? There'd be 2,000 people out here at 5 o'clock in the morning. Praying up to heaven. Well, now, we started that in our church in Cleveland, Tennessee. That when, when that started, when that broke out here, we started at 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, <clears throat> it's still going on. I put a lady in charge of it. We're starting to feel carrying out prayer meeting on after all these seven years. Glory to God forever. I gave that prayer department an office, and they have a, we have a prayer office where and she's in charge of it. Put a lady in charge of it. She runs the prayer department. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. And glory to God. Well, you create, a, you create an atmosphere of prayer here that spread all over the country. You remember that? A lot of churches all over the country was having prayer meetings then. I don't know. I imagine most of them quit, but we haven't. Most people do quit, you know, after a little while. They quit everything. The only person who don't quit is God. He don't ever quit. And he don't ever change. God don't ever change. He never changes. The Lord Jesus Christ has paid the price for everything, and he is everything. But he's not everything to you. You... Jesus becomes to you what you call him. A young man has stopped me outside last night, or not before last. Maybe it's last night. Not, not last night, not before last. Asked me to sign his Bible, and he came to my Bible school, and he had AIDS. Is he here? You hear, son? Lord, it to God for evermore. <clears throat> Come here, son. Come here. Look how healthy he looks. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. <clears throat> now, my daughter... Likes him. Man, they're good friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> the devil tried to kill him. What does Zona say to you about standing in front of the mirror and preaching to yourself? Every day. Give me a microphone, somebody. Preach. That's right. Is it on? <clears throat> Is this on? Yeah. <laughs> Just checking one, two. 
And I'm like, what's my daughter's on? I trained her. She was on drugs for three years and come real close to going to hell because nobody couldn't reach her. I brought Kenneth Hagin to my house and he couldn't reach her. And I brought Lester Summerall to my house and he couldn't reach her. She didn't change. And I just kept on praying, kept on praying, kept on and on walking the floor and praying and praying. After a while, I created the kind of atmosphere in my house. She came in one morning about, I slept at 2.30 and she didn't come in. She came in, she'd been on drugs for three years. She came in about four o'clock. And I'd walked the floor for a long time, prayed, been praying for three years. But that day I'd walked the floor for a long time and prayed that night. And the Lord put meat on an angel, sent the angel into her room. He was about as big as two men and had on real bright clothing. If you notice sometimes in the Bible, when angels appeared, they had on real bright clothing. This one had on real bright clothing. Sat on the side of her bed and looked at her, but the problem was he's about as big as two men. And she got so scared, the Lord scared all the dope devils out of her. Then the doctor says, you have lupus, and she screamed at it. The doctor says, you have this. The devil's tried to kill her several times. She refuses to die. She just keeps on and on and on and on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, he came to my Bible college. This young boy came to Cleveland, Tennessee. He came over there. And his owner told him to stand, stand in front of the mirror and preach every day. Right? Exactly, yes. What do you do now? Um, stand in front of the mirror. I stand in the mirror and I point at, you know, my finger at myself. And I quote those scriptures and I talk to myself every morning. Um, every time I go to the bathroom, really, yeah. you know, yeah. I tell myself <clears throat> that I will live and not die. Yeah. Psalms 118, verse 17. Psalms, you said? That I will live and not die, and I will tell the world what Jesus has done for me. Yes, sir. That's right. Son, don't, don't be afraid to say every day, AIDS, I'm talking to you. You leave my body, you'll never kill me. I am free from you. I am free from you. Now, he's a special of health. Look at him, he does it every day. You look like a specimen of health. Yeah. Stands in front of the mirror and says, tucks it every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. See? Healthy and strong. Yes, I am. I am strong and not weak, and I'm not going to be weak. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I am strong and not weak, and I'm not going to be weak. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. And she says, only check up on him. She says, she says well, you, are you still standing in front of the mirror preaching to yourself? And preaching every, all the time. No, 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 age, you're not going to kill me. I'm healthy. Age, you can't even stand. None of your symptoms are going to stay in my body. Age, I'm talking to you. Leave me in Jesus' name. I command you to go from me. I am healthy and strong. I will live and not die. I claim the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. You can make cancer disappear that way. You can make anything. You receive a miracle that way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> but you have to create the right kind of atmosphere. The Lord will come in. There's only one reason why God does not do any more <clears throat> of heaven's blessings and things in church services that he does is because they don't take time to create the right kind of atmosphere. If you'll create the right kind of atmosphere for Jesus, he'll show up. I'm just telling you that he will. But you got to create, you have to call him. Every church in America, every pastor in America, every church in America gets exactly what they preach. Whatever they preach, that's what they get. What they believe, that's what they get. Same goes with you too in your own household, in your own private life. Whatever you believe about Jesus, that's what you get. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Like in the Old Testament, everybody say, Jesus, the Lord's a miracle worker. In the Old Testament, they did a miracle. They called him. He wanted to call the king. He wanted to call him soothsayers and stuff, you know, and fortune tellers, <clears throat> magicians and stuff, you know. And he says, well, there's an old prophet in the land. He believes God performs miracles for him. Well, go get him. Call him in here. So he called him in here. Told him, he says, well, uh, you got some instruments over here. Yeah, you got some musical instruments, but... Calling the musicians, play these instruments over here. 
they started playing the instruments. I started playing the instruments, and the Lord God created they created that kind of atmosphere, and the Lord performed a miracle. Performed a miracle through playing instruments. Glory be to God forever. Performed a miracle. Jesus is a miracle worker. You understand that? He's a miracle worker. Now, you can also get a miracle a lot of times that are healing, and a miracle from certain people that's anointed of God's healing power, you can get a miracle. You go to a Benny Hinn service and you might get a miracle, but you might not, but you might get one because the Holy Spirit performs miracles there. Now, a lot of people don't hold on to it if you're not taught, you won't be able to hold on to it if you're not taught how to hold on to it, but you perform a miracle. Now, tonight in this building here, I told you last night, and I'm going to do what I told you. The Holy Ghost didn't change me. I said, well, I'll do it if you don't change me and so forth, but you'll get to watch Jesus perform miracles. You'll get to watch him perform a miracle here. And he said, well, I, I've never seen the Lord in my naked eyes perform a miracle. Just come down, perform a miracle for somebody. Well, tonight you'll get to see. Everybody say, Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a miracle worker. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You think you get an atmosphere for miracles, praise the Lord, forevermore? You say, well, can anybody have a miracle? Yeah, anybody can have a miracle. You can have a miracle from God. If you believe, you can believe God for a miracle and call him your miracle. You can call the Lord Jesus Christ your miracle worker. Believe God for your miracle and not waver in your faith, and the Lord will perform a miracle for you. You say, well, but Brother Norval, most human beings in the world... Uh, uh, don't know how to do that. True. Most of them don't know how to do it. And if they don't know how to do it, the Lord won't do it for them. Right? Right. No, he won't do it for them. You might get a, a healing or a miracle if you go to a certain type of service with a certain type of anointing. You might. But if you get it that way, you get that on a credit. You didn't get it through your own faith. You got it on a credit. You don't have to get your faith and believing straightened out to hold on to it because you got it on a credit. You didn't get it through your own faith. Well, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that Jesus is a miracle worker or not. Well, it's a very simple process. I can get, if you stayed around me very long, I can get you to believe anything that God needs to do for you. I can talk you into believing God to do that. If you stayed around me very long, all you have to do if you don't believe it, if you're not for sure you believe that Jesus will perform a miracle for you, just walk the floor in your own house and confess that Jesus is my own personal miracle worker. You might say, well, I believe the Lord is a miracle worker. But that's a general type believing that won't work for you. You have to believe, you have to be a specific believer. So if you'll walk the floor in your own house and confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is your own personal miracle worker, personal miracle worker. Jesus is my miracle worker. Jesus is my personal miracle worker. Jesus, you are my personal miracle worker. Jesus, you're my miracle worker. I confess with my mouth, Jesus, that you're my miracle worker. You're my miracle worker. You love me, Jesus. You paid the price for me, and you're my miracle worker. Jesus, Jesus, I need a miracle. And I confess you're my miracle worker. I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is my own personal miracle worker. And I'm going to thank you, Lord, for my miracle. And tell him what kind it is. If you need a miracle in your liver, tell him, say, Jesus, uh, the doctor says I have to die because my liver. A lady came to me here a while back, a school teacher from Buffalo, New York, and, and she had been to a lot of doctors, and this was her last try. Not even one chance in 10 million for her to live. Not one chance in 10 million. There was no hope for her to live. Because she had cancer in all four corners of her liver. And the doctors gave her up totally. They said, you'll be dead in a few days or a few weeks. It won't be very long. So I brought her to Gatlinburg. 
to my convention, and he came and told me, he said, Brother Norval, he says, this is my wife, and she's a school teacher, and this is our, Brother Norval, this is our last stop before the graveyard. You're our only hope. Either you can get, either Brother Norval, that you can get the Lord Jesus Christ to perform a miracle for us, or I'm going to be without a wife because she has cancer in the four corners of her liver and there's no way she can live, medical science says. I says, well, they'll tell you the truth. Medical science, doctors and good doctors and, and nurses and medical science, they, 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 they speak to you from experience, from their degrees, and they speak to you from the natural standpoint. And it's true. When you have cancer in the four corners of your liver, there is no way you're going to live. You might as well just mark it down. You might as well... Give them the songs you want sung at your funeral and order the flowers. Get the quartet you want to sing. And select your preacher that's going to preach the funeral. Tell them what color of casket you want. Tell them what color of dress or suit you want to wear in the casket. Because you're dead. It's just that simple. You are, you're, you're the same as a dead person. You're as sure to die as the sun is to come up in the morning with cancer in the four corners of your liver. If, if, you don't know that Jesus makes no livers. And most denominations don't know that Jesus makes no livers. It's kind of stupid not to know that since he makes all humans on earth, but. <laughs> For some strange reason, they got sidetracked on religion. And ideas of men, they just kind of bypass the truth. Jesus is the liver maker. You have to call him that. And you have to be bold about it. God never does anything for anybody with weak confession. If you don't come before the throne of God and claim, come before the throne of God and with boldness claim what is rightfully yours. You won't, you won't be receiving it unless you receive it temporarily on a credit to another person's ministry, like an anointing on somebody else. God's called evangelist or some preacher anointing. Uh, the first night I was here, I laid hands on everybody. Well, the anointing was on my hands. Now, tomorrow night, I may pray for everybody in the building because I know the Lord put that in my hands about 21 years ago to lay hands on people. And it's true, the anointing will go into you and heal you. There's no question about that part. It'll heal some people. Some people get it and some people don't. But the ones that don't, you get it right at that moment. If you thank the Lord for it, you can get it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But that's anointing on somebody else. That's their ministry, you know. But you can believe God yourself. If you'll call the Lord Jesus Christ your healer, say, Jesus, I need a new liver. And Lord, you're the best liver maker I know. You're the only liver maker I know. And I want to thank you, Lord, for a new liver. And do that for a few hundred times, for a few days, and uh, he'll hear you. I guarantee you the Lord will hear you. And if your faith wavereth not, he'll come to see you. And he'll bring a new liver with him. And right through the Holy Ghost, he'll speak from heaven right through the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will create a new liver inside of you. The work of heaven is being done by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person and he lives inside of you. And he's from heaven where they don't need any new livers. He's from a world where there is no sickness and disease. And the Holy Spirit has the knowledge to heal you. And has the, the Holy Spirit has more knowledge in five minutes than all doctors in the world has in 500,000 years. Because the Holy Spirit knows exactly how to make a new liver, just like that. See, doctors can't make a new liver. All of them together can't make a new liver. But the Holy Spirit can make one that quick, make you a brand new liver. I'm 
talking about take x-rays. You show cancer in four corners of your liver. And then go back and take x-rays. And they got a brand new liver. Now, you know how doctors are. Bless their hearts. They, uh, and thank God for doctors. I love doctors and nurses, especially if you got pain. Doctors look good if you got pain. <laughs> and you can't get it to stop. Well, she can stop most pain in Jesus' name. You can, make, you can take authority over pain. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. But usually most, most medical doctors will say, you know, and they say, well, I don't understand this. I don't understand this at all. Because now nobody in history I've ever heard of that's got a heal uh, with a new get a, get a new liver with got a heal with cancer in four corners of the liver, but uh, honey, you have you got a new liver inside of your body. You have a new liver inside of your body. Uh huh. I went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, to a camp meeting, and there's a fellow there from Tennessee named Norval Hayes, and he taught me how to talk. I should have known before by going to church, but I don't know. They just didn't emphasize it for some reason. But uh, I started calling Jesus my healer. I started walking the floor and saying, no, you'll never kill me. Uh -uh. I command a new liver in my body in Jesus' name. Jesus is making me a new liver right now. Devil, you can't kill me. Cancer, I'm talking to you. You can't kill me. And she said, I did it. I did it for several months. I mean, every day, every day, every day. And all of a sudden, one day, I got a new liver. Brand new one. Now then, the number one killer in America is heart disease. Bad hearts. That's the number one killer of all diseases in America. That's the number one killer in America is heart disease. Now, sometimes, people, listen to me closely. Sometimes the Lord will come along and pick somebody and give them a special gift in their ministry. Sometimes you talk to this evangelist or that evangelist, and you'll find out they have a special gift from God. Uh, maybe 95% of the people they pray for that has something wrong with them will do that. I'm totally convinced that Bob Tilton has a special gift from God and special insight and special knowledge on bad backs. I mean, I believe that Bob could have got hunchback of Notre Dame healed. <laughs> and boy, he was a total mess, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, I've been with Bob. He came to Gatlinburg one time to help me in a convention. Him and me was on the stage praying for people. And a couple came up, you know, like this right here. Been over like this right here. He prayed for them and they're still like this. He put his, he got behind them and put his knee in their back like this and took them to the shoulders and said, like this, and their bones cracked. <laughs> and I, I, I started to run out, I started to run outside and climb a tree. I've never seen anybody do that before. <laughs> I'd seen the I'd seen the Lord perform miracles before, but but I, you pray if the Lord don't do it, then you just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus name, and the way Bob hollers in Jesus name. <laughs> I'm convinced he scares devils that run off. Person's back. They always went like this. Ah, ah. Just, just touch your toes. They're going to touch their toes up and down like this. Totally normal. But the glory of the Lord came on that stage. My God. They were weeping and I was weeping. I said, oh, my God in heaven. Jesus. Glory to God forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I guess it's about 18 years ago. The Lord put a special gift into my ministry. I've never known him to give this particular gift to anybody else, but I'm sure he probably has given it to a lot of people. I just never have known anybody personally that had it. And uh, I don't know, uh, but he's probably given it to a lot of people around the world. 
but he gave it to me about 18 years ago. Now, if I will call Jesus miracle worker some more, and if I, if I tell you about it, I have to tell you about it. If I tell you about it, how he did it, it comes stronger. You see what I mean? And because that particular gift that he gave me will save people's lives in this building. There's people in here would probably be dead in a few days or a few months or a few weeks. And uh, maybe a few short years, you'll be dead. But this gift and an operation can save your life. You can live your life out. I'm telling you, it'll totally save your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. And it just comes. And it's been, God's been coming and doing it for 18 years. Blessed be God forevermore. In Carbondale, it all started with me in Carbondale, Illinois, one night. I booked to speak at a full gospel business chapter meeting. Now, this is not a convention. This is a chapter meeting. Small town chapter meeting, Carbondale, Illinois. Southern Illinois University is there. And they had about 150, 200 people at the chapter meeting. A lot of small town chapters have anywhere from 20 people to 200 people, something like that. Larger town sometimes has anywhere from 50 people to 1,000 people in chapters. But they had about 150, 200 people there. Now I'm in the back of a car riding to these, these people pick me up, riding to, to speak and give my testimony at a full gospel business chapter meeting. And I'm, I'm just sitting in the back of the car and they're sitting in the front. And I'm just riding along towards the meeting, you know, feeling good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. And all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, out of the blue, just all of a sudden, my heart began to hurt. Hurt. Oh, huh. Mm. I must be sitting in a strain. So I turned around like this, you know, and kind of twisted. But it didn't stop. It hurt worse. I said, I don't know what's wrong. Twist around this way. Took a deep breath or two. John on the Isle of Patmos said, I am your brother in your tribulation. I am your brother in your tribulation. I didn't know what the Lord was doing, but he was taking me into a world, allowing me to go into a world where people live and feel the heartbeat of a person that had a bad heart in their chest. I didn't know what he was doing. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I twisted around and it got worse. And a little voice said to me, you know how little demons are, you're having a heart attack. <laughs> All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reminded me, when people have a heart attack, you've heard, they have pain under their arm like this, you know, or coming down like this, you know, on the side, you look at your... I had none of that at all. Right here in my heart, just hurting, hurting like bad. I says, no, no, I bind those words in Jesus' name. I'm not having a heart attack. He just kept on, and I thought, well, I don't know how I'm going to speak tonight. It just keeps on and on and on. So we finally got to the place. I said, I don't even know my own mind. I said, I don't have my other car. I just thought that. I didn't say it. And, uh, but they pulled up and the place was full of people and I opened the door, they opened the door for me and I kind of slid out and sideways and I camouflaged it. I took my Bible like this, like this right here and I, I got out of the car. We were walking in the building and I'm walking like this. They looked around and said, Brother Norville, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, 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 everything's fine. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So we went on and I got on the stage and I sat down I sat down in the chair on the stage, and I said, well, thank God, at least I got to sit down. I made it to the stage. But, you know, full gospel businessmen, they have several testimonies and some songs and so forth. And um, that's fine because full gospel businessmen has a good ministry. Testimony ministry is a good ministry. You're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. The Lord likes for you to give your testimony, what, he, what he's done for you. 
And so the man was getting there, and he was ready, ready to start getting ready to introduce me. I could tell he's going to introduce me in a few, few seconds. He's getting ready to introduce me, and I'm sitting there with my heart hurting. This is bad. I'm in real bad. I don't know how in the world I'm ever going to speak for a while. And all of a sudden, I heard these words out of my belly. Listen, listen to these words what the Lord said to me. I never heard God talk like this before in my life. He said, now, when they first introduce you, son, when you first get up there and they first introduce you, I want you to call everybody down front when you first get up there that has a bad heart. Tonight, I'm going to pump a new heart into their chest. I says, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody with a bad heart, would you please will come down here quickly, quickly. And I stand like this, you know, because my heart was hurting so bad. Would you please come down here quickly? And they begin to run down front. I don't know. It looked like it, it looked like about 40 people run down front, 40 or 50 people run down front. And when they come down front, it was like, <clears throat> I don't know, like an unseen power came in like this right here. And this goes like, like a, like a big fan or something like, whoosh. And I'm sitting up here behind the pulpit and they fell, they fall flat on the floor. They're getting new hearts. And the Holy Ghost just took the thing over. He took the meeting over. They got to work it out in the congregation. Miracles started working out in the congregation. They were crying, falling between the seats and everything. Some people standing around the walls, and I saw them sliding down the walls, weeping. Just sliding down the wall. People standing around the walls, sliding down the wall, weeping. And I'm, I'm just standing here like this. And God let me watch that for about five minutes. And you couldn't, he just took the thing over. And all of a sudden, it's like an unseen hand came like this. It went into my, went into my mouth like an unseen hand came in. Went into my mouth. Went down here like this, right down through me. Went like this right here. And it seemed like that hand had fingers on it. And it went like this right here. Now watch this. I'm standing here watching all this. And my heart's still hurting so bad I can't hardly stand it. That unseen hand seemed like it had fingers on it. It went like this. Gathered up all the pain and all the hurt. Gathered it up. Like and squeezed it like this. And it went slowly. Glory to God. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. I felt like I, th I felt like I was about fifteen years old. Glory to God. All the pain left. Everything left me. I said, "Oh my Lord Jesus, help us all." Glory to God. Sometimes intercession can come on you. No, not very often, but sometimes intercession can come on you. And if you if you'll pray. Pray that out. Now, if you're a true intercessor, you know what I'm talking about. If, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not an intercessor. You don't even know what it means. Um, you, you pray that out. Intercession comes on you. Supernatural intercession comes on you. You're supposed to pray until you pray that out. That means you're supposed to pray until you hit a note of victory. And sometimes you have to, it's like plowing corn before you hit a note of victory. Sometimes you may have to pray for 30 minutes, or sometimes for two or three hours, sometimes even longer. But sometimes, <clears throat> it's happened to me before, sometimes you'll be praying in, in the Spirit and you'll pray, you don't know what to pray for, so the Bible says if you don't know what to pray for, then let the Spirit pray. So you let the Spirit pray, you just pray in the Spirit. Is what that means. And then you pray in the Spirit, and you've been praying in the Spirit for an hour, or an hour and a half, or two hours. And all of a sudden, sometimes you go, you'll even go into groanings before the Lord. The Bible tells you you will. And sometimes, and I'll, then you'll, you'll be, sometimes, if you get out far enough in the Spirit world that you're groaning before God, <clears throat> you're just groaning and moaning before the Lord. And, uh, <clears throat> 
Sometimes a certain part of your body will take on a pain. It'll hurt so bad. I mean, it'll hurt, man. So you just have to keep on getting the breath and groaning it out. Don't stop just because you're getting pain. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. And you just groan it out. And you're feeling a pain, a terrible pain in some part of your body. Well, what you're doing, what you're doing, you may not know this, <clears throat> but you're praying for somebody that's got that same kind of pain maybe in New York or New Orleans or L.A. And you're praying for them. <clears throat> they may be dying with that kind of a pain. Now, <clears throat> if you'll pray that out until you hit a note of victory, the moment you hit a note of victory, the Lord will heal them. Totally heal them. When you hit a note of victory. When you hit a note of victory, you can stop praying. Your prayer is over. So go ahead and enjoy the, the victory, whatever it may be. Sometimes it's laughing with joy. Sometimes it's singing a song. And sometimes it's just rejoicing in the Lord. It's like turning a plate over. You're groaning one minute with pain. It's like turning a plate over inside of your belly after you do it for so long. Like turning a plate over inside of your belly. All the pain disappears. All the groaning disappears. And out of your innermost being comes a flood of joy. Supernatural. You have no control over it. Flood of supernatural joy coming up. Glory to God out of you. And so you've hit, you have hit pay dirt, my brother and sister. You've hit a note of victory. You understand that? I've done that with people over in missionaries in the mission field, dying of no hope and tribal diseases, and have God to use me for that and do it, and they get healed totally. Get healed totally. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. It's amazing. It is amazing. Blessed be God forever. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Blessed be his holy name. So I got up, and they introduced me, and I got up, and I said, everybody with a bad heart, would you please will come down here quickly, quickly. And I stand like this, you know, because my heart was hurting so bad. Would you please come down here quickly? And they begin to run down front. I don't know. It looked like, it, it looked like about 40 people run down front, 40 or 50 people run down front. And when they come down front, it was like, <clears throat> I don't know, like an unseen power came in like this right here. And this goes like, like, a, like a big fan or something like and I'm sitting up here behind the pulpit, and they fell, they fall flat on the floor. They're getting new hearts. And the Holy Ghost just took the thing over. He took the meeting over. We got to work it out in the congregation. Miracles start working out in the congregation. And they were crying, falling between the seats and everything. Some people standing around the walls, and I saw them sliding down the walls, weeping. Just sliding down the wall. People standing around the walls, sliding down the wall, weeping. And I'm, I'm just standing here like this. And God let me watch that for about five minutes. And you couldn't, he just took the thing over. And all of a sudden, it's like an unseen hand came like this. It went into my, went into my mouth like an unseen hand came in. Went into my mouth, went down here like this, right down through me. Went like this right here. And it seemed like that hand had fingers on it. And it went like this right here. Now watch this. I'm standing here watching all this. And my heart's still hurting so bad I can't hardly stand it. That unseen hand seemed like it had fingers on it. It went like this. Gathered up all the pain and all the hurt. Gathered it up. Like and squeezed it like this. And it went slowly. It went, Glory to God. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. I felt like I was, I felt like I was about 15 years old. Glory to God. All the pain left, everything left me. I said, oh, my Lord Jesus, help us all. Glory to God. And so he just took the thing over. And so after the service was over, 
And I said, well, boy, this is the most unusual service I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen the Holy Ghost do this before in my life. Just come in and take over to begin the service and just melt them on the floor and see, just stand and watch it. And uh, after it was over, I noticed the full gospel businessmen, well, they, they, they loved me and respected me before, but they, they treated me like I was somebody foreign, you know what I mean? They treated me like I was a king just come to town. They opened the doors for me, you know. Oh, yeah, but can I help you do anything? And we got this new thing, Brother Novel. Brother Novel, can you do anything? Just like this, you know, this new thing. And I got in the back seat. We pulled off, and of course, they were talking, some coming out, and nobody said a word. They're taking me back to where I'm living, see, where I'm staying, and nobody said a word. After a while, one of them says, Brother Novel, we had no idea. That God used you like that. That's the most awesome thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the whole building was just filled with the glory of the Lord. And he just come in. He said, I didn't know God used you like that. I said, you didn't? I didn't need it, but I found it out tonight. <laughs> well, not me being a Bible teacher, you know, going around the country holding Bible seminars. I just thought it was a good service, a good spiritual service, a good, real good service. And it was a blessed, sweet, precious service. But I just thought it was a real supernatural, special service. So I'm going to go along holding Bible seminars, you know, around different places. And I don't know, it must have been three or four weeks or a month later. I went to I in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the Full Gospel Business Men's Convention. Now, this is a state convention. The other meeting was over in Illinois, a chapter meeting. Now, this is a state convention. I think they had 17 chapters in the state at that time. I used to live in Indianapolis, but uh, I'd been moved out there for a long time into Tennessee. But I, I went back to Indianapolis for that, for that convention. Started on Thursday night. You know, they do it, Full Gospel Business Men. They have a long table like this, you know. On the state conventions, and they have a lot of men sitting over here, chapter presidents. They had 17 chapter presidents, plus if they have any ministers in the congregation they want to invite, they'll do that, you know, But and, and if, if they know somebody. And so they, they had men all, all the way down like this. I'm sitting down there. I came in. They had me a seat down there. And I'm sitting on the, there at my seat, and I just I was just thinking. I come in. I said, I'm going to go down. I don't, I don't have to speak tonight. This is Thursday night. Convention starting off, and I don't have to speak. Tonight, this is not my time to speak, so I just get to sit and enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the service tonight and enjoy the testimony. I'm going to enjoy every testimony, every song. I just feel so good in the Lord. Blessed be God. I noticed when I sat down how good I felt. So I'm just feeling so good in the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad. It's good to be in Indianapolis tonight. Get to hear all these testimonies and stuff and just enjoy it. And so I'm sitting there and having testimonies, you know. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I didn't think about it. All of a sudden, my heart began to hurt. I went. Made it hurt stronger and stronger. I thought, I must be sitting in a strain. <laughs> but it didn't stop. So I moved my legs over this way and twisted around, took some deep breaths. Didn't stop. Hurt worse. And I'm sitting there like this. And I'm trying to take deep breaths. Move myself around a little bit, you know. And all of a sudden, Brother Hagin calls it a mini vision. All of a sudden, I saw myself and carved a little noise. Right in the car. And my heart began to hurt. I saw myself getting out of the car, sitting on the stage. I heard the man say, tonight. I mean, I heard the man say, I'm going to introduce our speaker in, in shortly. And I heard the Lord say to me, when you get up there, I call everybody out with a heart, bad heart, because I am going to pump a little heart into their chest. So he introduced me. I went up and called them down to watch them, and here come the power. Whoosh, it fell flat on the floor. And I'm telling you, God was pumping new hearts in them. They were crying all over everywhere. Some of them looked like they were dead. Not all of them, but some of them were weeping and crying. Some of them looked like they were dead. And so... <clears throat> So I, I, after, and I began to see this right here. And then, then, I, then, I, then, I, then all of a sudden, I got the picture. I got it. Uh, I just thought it was a good service. I got it. 
I said, no, Lord, Jesus, I don't want to do that. I said, Jesus, this is a state convention. <laughs> this is not a 150 people cha chapter meeting, Lord. I said, Lord, I was the main speaker there that night when you did that. I so appreciate you doing that though and saving those people's lives with a new, new heart. But I said, Jesus, that was a chapter meeting and I was the main speaker, but I'm not a speaker tonight. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be speaking later on this week, but I'm not a speaker tonight. I don't want to interrupt somebody else's service. I says, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Every time I said I don't want to do it, my heart would hurt worse. Worse. It hurt worse. Now, you're not going to believe I'm this stupid. <laughs> but I was this stupid. I have to tell you the truth. I'm going to give you this testimony. I have to tell you the truth. And it, my heart kept hurting worse. I mean, real bad. And I said, Lord, I don't want to do it. I said, I don't want to do it. Lord, I said, I'm not the main speaker, and this is a state convention, and I don't want to do it tonight, Lord. I said, let's do it tomorrow when I speak. <laughs> he act like he act like I don't have no sense. And compared to him, I don't have any sense. I, don't, I, don't, I only know how to do a, do a few natural things. But when you're dealing with God, you're dealing with somebody that knows how to do everything all the time, 24 hours a day. And I said, God, I don't want to do this. I don't, I'm not the speaker. I don't want to interrupt somebody else's service, Jesus. And every, every time I do it, it hurt worse. It got to hurt real bad. I mean, and finally, now you're not going to believe I'm this stupid. Finally, says, Lord, this is not my service, and I don't want to interrupt. I'm not going to do it. When I said that, you know, now, you know you're stupid to talk to God that way. Please, don't ever be as dumb as I was. When I said, Jesus, I'm not going to do it. The moment I said that, my breath stopped being cut off. And I went, oh, 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 oh. I said, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I couldn't even breathe. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to die there on the stage. I jumped up out of my chair. It was, I was so desperate for air. I jumped up out of my chair. I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I mean, I jumped up real quick. Hey, you, you obey God real quick when you, when you he cuts your breath off. <laughs> well, God don't like me, Benjamin. God don't, God don't honor, he don't honor a stupid Baptist like me either. I don't care how much he teaches about, teaches word. He tells you to do something, he wants you to do it. And so, I went over like this real quick clock. And the, the guy was standing here, the, the host of the commission was standing here like this. He was standing here, and he says, uh, and he was talking, and I, I, I real, I didn't want to waste no time, and I picked him on the shoulder. <laughs> I picked him on the shoulder, and he, he turned around, and he said, yeah. I said, can I obey the Holy Ghost? He said, <laughs> I interrupted what he was talking. I wanted air. And so he stepped back like he stepped back like this and he paused a while. He stepped back like he says, uh, well, well, okay, Brother Noble, okay, go ahead. So I come and says, Everybody in here right now, this is a large crowd. The other crowd was just a little small crowd, and about 40 people jumped up out of the seat and ran down front. This was a large crowd, you know, hundreds of people. A state convention. I says, everybody in this building right now has a bad heart. Get up out of your seat come down here. And them Hoosiers just sat and looked at me. <laughs> I said, everybody all over everywhere has a bad heart. Get up out of your seat come down here and stand in front of me right now. And over here I saw a person get up. Real easy. He come walking down.
<laughs> and then another one, another two or three over here, got up, walking down real slow. After a while, after a while, I think there was finally 12 that came, walking real slow, standing in line there in front of me, all 12 of them, and all of them, they're standing there, and I said, I looked over this way for the power, I said, okay, God. You thank your Lord and give him a new heart. Give it to him. Give the power. I, I look back at this 12 and I thought to myself, now boy, this is a motley looking faithless crew if I've ever seen one in my life. They look like, they look like they've ever read the book of Hebrews. <laughs> they start looking at me like this. <laughs> by, by this time I'm having hot flashes <laughs> I look over this way and hundreds of Hoosier eyes are looking at me I look down the table of the full gospel video has been on this long table down here like this and all the heads are turned this way Look down here and all these heads are turned this way. I said, please come, Lord. Get them, Jesus. I got them. I obeyed you, Lord. I got them down here, Lord. Get them, get them, Jesus. Get them. Get them, Lord. Get them. Well, <laughs> he didn't get them. And I'm telling you right now, I'm having real hot flashes by now. And so <clears throat> I, I begged God to come in with his power and do what he did and probably a little noise, but he just didn't show up. <clears throat> I looked at these 12, 12 people out of those hundreds, 12 of them. And I, every time I look at them, they just stand there like this. They're standing in front of me like this. I said, oh, God, help me, Jesus, help me. Oh my God! I said, "Boy, I'm telling you right now, I sure can't pick them." <clears throat> Lord, have mercy! <clears throat> they look like they're half dead already. <clears throat> Him. <clears throat> <clears throat> And I don't know what I don't know what to do. And I'm standing here, all these eyes looking at me and looking at me. And all of a sudden, I'm sure it's the Holy Ghost saying, when you don't know what to do, just uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> it's always right to praise the Lord. I said, Well, folks, I said, uh, let's just uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. And so I said, Praise the Lord. And I lifted my hands like no music. And I said, oh, Lord, I praise you. Yes, I do. <laughs> I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. The, a few, around, not very many, were like this. Yeah, praise you, Lord. <laughs> praise you, Lord. I couldn't hardly hear them. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I said, let's just praise the Lord, people. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Not hardly but over to praise the Lord. I look back down at this twelve, this famous twelve. And this and then like this. They looked like they were saying to me, "Are you stupid? I feel stupid being down here." And I said, well, let's just praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Oh, praise him, praise him. And I just kept on. And the Lord showed me what to do. Because I used to, if, if, I, if I could try to get a married couple back together, you know, they're separated and they haven't kissed each other in six months and all that kind of stuff. I, I, the Lord showed me one time what to do. 
And I counsel them. I get them on the floor on their knees, put one hand on her back, one on his back, and I pray. I, I just close my eyes and I pray till God comes. And God comes to get the home back together. They start sobbing and weeping. They get to hugging each other, kissing each other in my office. You get the home back together. So I said, okay, okay, okay that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to close my eyes and praise the Lord. I said, I feel like my, I feel like my temperature is about 120. I'm having hot flashes. I said, well, I just praise the Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I praise the name of the Lord. I hold his name above all names. I praise you, Jesus. I praise the name of the Lord. 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 Then I praise the Lord a little bit better. I look down at these 12 and it's the same way. I look at them. They look at me like this. I say, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, praise the Lord forever. Oh, Jesus, we praise you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. I just kept on. And I just, you know what, this just override some people, you know. I just did this so long and so loud. I finally got some of them. I created a kind of atmosphere. Some of them joined me. And I finally got the conviction. It was the first night, you know, kind of cold anyway, you know. They just kind of floated in there. And I got, I finally got the congregation praising the Lord some. And I look back down to these, they're still looking. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Just keep on praising the Lord. And we praise it. Finally, after a while, I got them to praise the Lord pretty good. And they put, well, pretty much all over, they were praising the Lord pretty good. Oh, we praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Let's praise God forever. I praise you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, I praise you. And I heard, I heard a voice that goes, ha, ha! Opened up my eyes, and the one on the end had fell out. And I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We praise your name. There's all power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty power. Ah! I heard another one. I looked down, and the one next to that one and fell out. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah! Fell out. Well, let's praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And the next one went, ah, fell out. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. One by one. Bloom, bloom, bloom. Now there's 12 of them fell out. Now then it looks like the congregation. As far as I can tell, ain't nobody looking at me. They're going, I look down this way at all these full gospel businessmen sitting behind the table. They're not looking at me. They're sitting behind the table like this and they're going. <laughs> I said, glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. And I would do that, you know, and, 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 and so in a little while, after a while, um, when the Holy Spirit eased up a little bit, I went back and sat down, and they started to get up, you know, after a while, just trusting in the Lord. So I'd go back and sit down. Then when I go on, I'd be in cities teaching the Bible, holding seminars, and sometimes I'd be getting dressed to go to the service, and my heart began to hurt. I said, I'll, I'll do it, Lord. <laughs> I will do it tonight. Sometimes in the afternoons, maybe the middle of the afternoon, I'd be somewhere, and my heart would begin to hurt. I said, Lord, I will do it tonight. I'll change my message. I'll do it tonight, Lord. I'll do it tonight. So for about a year, I guess, a year or so, maybe longer, it goes by. And whenever I get a signal like that, my heart began to hurt. I'd have one of those kind of services. Well, I went to Lester Summerall's and uh, held a meeting. 
I believe it's that particular time, me and finally Jennings Dick, I believe. But I was charged at the service, and so I was speaking that night, and my altar called, and the Holy Spirit was working real strong. I mean, you know, Lester, when you speak in his church, he sits over there. And I, if you say something good, <clears throat> I've known Lester for a lot of years. If you say something good, he grunts. He goes, mm. 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 You make a good point about the Lord, about something God's done what the Lord told you something, and if it ministers to him, he'll go, hmm, hmm, hmm. But he watches his altar calls. I don't care who it is in his church. And then the Holy Spirit started working so strong that night in the altar, he always comes up like this and stands right here by the pulpit, leans over the pulpit like this, and watches the whole thing. Real, like a Hawkeye, he watches the whole thing. I mean, the Holy Ghost is operating on them. Just like you'll be doing here in a few minutes. Hmm. After service, we was getting something to eat. Lester said, um, My, 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 Brother Norval, he said, That's quite a gift that God's given you in your ministry. Don't think I ever seen that before just like that. Don't believe I ever did. Give it strong, strong, man. I said, yeah, some nights are stronger than other nights. But I said, he does. He gave it to me. And I said, I obey him. He saved a lot of people's lives through that gift, Brother Lester, he gave me about a year ago. And I said, I, I, just, I only have those kind of services when my heart begins to hurt. I get a signal from him when my heart begins to hurt. I have one of those kind of services. He says, now, Brother Norval, he said, let me tell you something. He said, when God has given you a gift that's strong in your ministry, the way the Holy Spirit was ministering at the altar tonight to those people, and God has given you a gift that's strong in your ministry, you don't have to wait till your heart hurts, Brother Norval. Anytime you get ready, God's ready. I said, is that right? <laughs> he said, that's right. I wish I was young enough. Wish I could live to be 500 years old. Go to every church in America and have one of these kind of services like we're having tonight. Because it saves so many black people's lives. Glory to God forever. But I say Jesus is a miracle worker. But I say Jesus makes new hearts. But I say Jesus is the best heart maker I've ever seen. But I say Jesus is the best surgeon I ever met. Now, with no further ado, would you listen to me closely? You in this building right now. If your heart does not beat normal, and you're the only one that knows that, I don't know it, but you know it if it don't or not. If your heart does not beat normal, but you want your heart beating normal, get up out of your seat and come stand right here. Make me a line. All the way to the cameraman if you have to. Make me a line. Make me a line. Stand up close to the step here. Stand up close to the step. Put your toes up close to the step. Make it all the way down this way, all the way around this thing here. Right up even with this. All the way around here. If your heart does not beat normal, and you want your heart to beat normal. Come quickly. Got to have a single line as far as they go. If they have to go up the side of the building, I got to have a single line. This is not this is not something I can come back. I got to have them all in the altar. I got to have a single line. I'll let them go all the way down, all the way down. Ushers, got to get them a single line. Listen to me, ushers. Single line all the way down. Even if they have to go up the wall, all the way down. Single line. Understand me? 
single line all the way down. Get them in a single line. Uh, everybody in place. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. All right. All right. Now those up against the wall there, uh, I'd like to have, because I, I need to have somebody behind you. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now real quick, like, Men of the congregation, listen to me closely. Everybody say, Jesus is the, best, is the world's best surgeon. And he starts operating on them. He lays a lot of them out. So real quick, <clears throat> I, need, I need a man behind every person. One man behind every person. Stand close to him, but I don't want you to touch him. But stand close to him. <clears throat> One man behind every person. One man behind every person. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Now that man that's stand behind him, listen to me. Stand close to them, but don't touch them. You got to keep your eyes on them. Please listen to me closely. Because when the Holy Ghost starts operating, <clears throat> starts pumping new heart into their chest, I mean, he does it so fast sometimes, so quick. Just like that sometimes. And you, 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 need, you need to be watching, watching and keep your eyes. You're down here to minister to that particular person standing in front of you. That's why you're down here. So keep your eyes on them. Now, that, now then, you that came down here for a new heart tonight, I want you to close your eyes. No more looking around. No more looking around if you want a new heart. Now, I don't control your mind, but you do. Close your eyes. No more looking around. <clears throat> I want you to make your mind think about Jesus. So you can make your mind do what you want it to do. Make your mind think about Jesus. Your mind think about Jesus. Now, congregation, you can watch this. He's ready, he's ready to operate now. Now, you, let me show you something. Watch this. See, I've been doing this so long, 18 years. Now, he's, you watch this woman here in the blue, with the blue dress. Now, the Holy Ghost has already started operating on her. He'll give her a new heart. He'll, he'll make her brand new. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Do you understand that? All right. Now, keep, keep your mind under control. Make your mind think about Jesus. And your mouth just gently, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Or you can say, Jesus, I want to thank you for my new heart. Jesus, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for my new heart, Jesus. Lord, thank you for my new heart. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for my new heart, Lord. Thank you for my new heart, Lord, Jesus. Thank you for my new heart, Lord, Jesus. Thank you for my new heart, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, my new heart, Jesus. And you that's sitting there close can watch the Lord operate on her. You can watch him. What he'll do for her. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Just watch him. You understand that? Now then, congregation... You stretch your hand out here. Now the Holy Ghost already started giving this fellow here in the blue shirt right in front of me right here. He's already started giving him a new heart. Blessed be his holy name. Solomon Santa Kahata. Solomon Tehidio. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord, by your mighty power to give these people a new heart tonight. Lord, some of them's on the verge of death. 
because bad hearts sometimes stops 40 years before their life is up. Lord, they deserve a new heart. They have a right to a new heart. <clears throat> you may hear all kinds of stuff when the Holy Ghost starts operating on them. All kinds of... Because Jesus is a surgeon. He's, a best, he's the world's best surgeon. I'm telling you that he's the world's best surgeon. He knows how to make new hearts. He knows how to make new hearts. Blessed be his holy name. Sometimes he does it real quick and sometimes he don't. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salamon taka mahanda. Dodo soko mahanda. Sidimion toko sataka malaya on toko sasakahaya. Sadamon satabayo toko sasakalagai. Hiramon satako do da gabionda. Bion santo ko do ko jataka basai. Sananondo ko hoya. Gotta take it real easy. You can't be in a hurry. Because God don't work according to your schedule or my schedule. You have to glorify Him. In church, the more you put your hand out here, the more you say, Jesus, thank you for giving my brothers and sisters a new heart, Lord. Lord, thank you for giving my brothers and sisters a new heart. I ask you, Lord, let them live their life out. Give them a new heart tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving them a new heart tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving them a new heart tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Saramota loco sasaka mahanda. Ladamon sade be shiri oto kodo loco sasako hoi. Ladamon sa yoto kodo loco yoto ko sasaka haya. Just be patient and keep on praying. Just be patient and keep on praying. Keep on praying and keep on thanking the Lord. Just thank Him, thank Him, thank Him at the congregation. If you don't mind, congregation, no moving around, nobody leaving right now, if you don't mind, because if you won't get up and move around or start talking, he'll work stronger and stronger and stronger. But he has to have your undivided attention. He wants you to watch him. He wants his gospel on top of the table where you can see it to cause you to believe. Lord, to cause you to believe. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sadamundo la locosanda. Sadamundo yo to yo locosaya. Sadabio to kala la carmanda. Sadiondo ko de locomonta. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Jesus, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Blessed be his holy name. Vara boko sata. Roda bo sata be shirio to kala la kahaya. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Just keep on praying, patience. Keep on praying, praying congregation, and have patience. Keep on praying with patience. Thank you, the Lord, with patience. Jesus is exactly who he says he is. The Lord Jesus Christ is exactly who he says he is. He is Jesus. He is the great physician. He's the best doctor I ever met. He's the best surgeon I ever met. Blessed be his holy name. Salamon sakalioto kolodoko bohanda. Labama sandion lokalalaka sasaka bohanda. Sidadagyo to kolodoko bohanda. Lara Sanda Bayotoka Sasakahaya. Lara Bossa Te Bishi Yoto Kaloko Hoy. Lara Bossa Yoto Kaloko Hoy. Ira Bossa Taka Mahanda. Lara Bossa Yote Kibishi Yoto Kaloko Sasakahai. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Jesus, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. The Lord has set miracles in the church. The Lord has set miracles in the church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. God has set some in the church. First apostles, second early prophets, third day teachers. After that, miracles. Notice in God's word, after he put the office in the church, he set miracles in the church. Plural. Miracles. <clears throat> you need a miracle from God. A, new, a miracle from God. Well, he's a miracle worker. Miracles are set in the church for free for all church members. For all church members. Not just new hearts, but for all church members. Miracles are set for all church members. Different kinds of miracles. Miracles. Remember I told you about the woman in blue? You remember that congregation about the woman in blue? He gave her a new heart. Totally operate on her. In Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God wants to lay some people out and give them a new heart. He'll give some of them a new heart standing up. But sometimes he wants to lay you out. If he wants to lay you out, let him lay you out. If he don't, it's perfectly all right. You just let, do, let, let, let God do what he wants to. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows what he's doing all the time in Jesus' name. Now then the man here in the second shirt, he's moved up on him to give him a new heart openly. So you might as well just get ready, sir. See, I just tell you my testimony and my story. The Holy Spirit does the work. He moves upon him and does the work himself. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Obey God. Let God do what he wants to to you in Jesus' name. He's the best surgeon I ever met. Let him operate on you in Jesus' name. God likes to give you a new heart. A bad heart can kill you at an early age. A bad heart, heart trouble is America's number one killer. But Jesus is a heart maker. The Lord Jesus Christ 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 is a heart maker. Be patient. Let your faith waver not. Just keep on thanking the Lord for a new heart. Keep your eyes closed because the Lord loves you. He wants to give you a new heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. Thank you, Lord, for giving her a new heart. <clears throat> But this little girl right here in the striped blouse, she's receiving a new heart from the Lord. And see, the Holy Ghost will move upon you. He'll give it to you. If you thank him for it, he'll, I'm telling you, he'll give it to you. Because he wants to fulfill your needs. And if your heart is all messed up, you need a miracle in your heart. You need a new heart. So thank him for a new heart if you need one. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your mouth confessing faith and thanksgiving with patience. Thanksgiving with patience. Be patient. Keep on praying, congregation. 
Use your patience, congregation, just a little bit more. Let prayer and faith come out, thanksgiving come out from you. How you respond, congregation, to the Lord and what you thank God for our congregation causes God to do great things in your church, in your church. Because God don't love anybody in the world more than he loves you. Your prayer means a lot out there in the congregation. Your faith means a lot. When you show God and you tell God, I thank you, Lord, for giving a new heart to my brothers and sisters that needs one tonight. That causes him to come stronger. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving causes God Almighty to move upon the scene. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This one right here is getting a new heart. This one right here is. The one right there is. The one right here is. Now they're going to move out nearly all over the place, up and down the aisles. They're just receiving real Christ. So keep on praying. Keep on praying, congregation. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Congregate. Stretch your hand out here and say, devil, you're not going to kill my brother and sister. Jesus is their healer. He's their miracle worker. Say, thank you, Jesus, for giving my brothers and sisters new hearts. Make them strong. In Jesus' name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be God forevermore. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep thanksgiving going, and I shall see the glory of the Lord. God said, Trust me, and I shall see the glory of the Lord. Only believe, and I shall see the glory of the Lord. Only believe, and I shall see the glory of the Lord. Only believe. You don't have to do a lot of things. He says, Only believe. Not all the whole bunch of things. Only believe. Only believe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes when a person feels a new heart coming into their chest, <clears throat> they can't understand it. They just scream out. Well, that's all right. Let them scream. They have a right to scream out. The Lord just gave them a new heart. They have a right to scream out for Thanksgiving. Let them scream. I don't care. Let them scream out with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. <clears throat> Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my new heart. Thank you, Lord, for a new heart for him. For the fellow in the blue shirt, Jesus, thank you for giving him a new heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. Give it to him, Jesus. Give it to him, Jesus. Give it to him, Jesus. Give it to him. Give it to him, Lord. Give it to him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. He needs a new heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to him. You are giving it to him, and I praise you for it. I praise you for it, Lord, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a new heart. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a new heart. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a new heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a new heart. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for a new heart for him. In Jesus' name. 
Everybody raise your hands and shout. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. 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 Thank you, Lord, my new heart. Salamo kasaka mahanda. Lila mo sasaka mo lo lo kayanda kasaka mahanda. Thank you, Lord, for my new heart. Everybody say, Jesus. Is the world's best surgeon. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts, for my brothers and sisters. Say in Jesus' name, we pray and we command our brothers and sisters in the altar to receive a new heart, that their heart would be normal and function normal and be strong. And not weak in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts. Now shout. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts. Thank you, Lord, for new hearts. Oh, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. A great number of you in the altar, and maybe all of you, I don't know, but a great number of you has received a new heart tonight. Glory to God forevermore. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So now then, now then, now then let's be real quiet, except everybody in the altar, hold up your hands real high, also the congregation. Now let's just worship him. Give him all the glory. Lord Jesus, no man can do this, Lord. What, what my eyes have seen tonight, I can't blame it on some man shocking them. But the normal didn't touch him. I'm not stupid, Jesus. I saw your power come in. I can see that your power was on them. It came in because that you love them. Jesus, I didn't know you loved sick people this much. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I can see it. I can see it. If I worship you and praise you and believe you, I can have anything I want. And you can. I don't have everything, people. Heaven's got it. The world don't have everything. Heaven's got everything. Jesus and heaven has everything. But you can get heaven down to earth. Do you understand that? The Holy Ghost that does all the work. The one that does all the work on these people. You see the work he's doing? He's not from this world. He's from heaven. You understand? He knows exactly what he's doing. He's from heaven. Where he comes from, everybody has new hearts. All the time. There's no imperfections. He, the Holy Ghost thanks new hearts all the time. If you have a bad heart, he's, he's hoping someday, somehow, some way, that you will raise your face toward heaven and begin to thank Jesus for a new heart. So the Holy Ghost would like for you to do that because... That way he can give you one. If you don't raise your face toward heaven, 
and looking for Jesus and seeking him and thanking him for a new heart, the Holy Ghost can't help you. You have to claim what you want in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Jesus paid the price for miracles. Jesus paid the price for my healing. But say, it's up to me to recognize Jesus as my healer, as my miracle worker. Then it's up to me to accept him in my life as my miracle worker and as my healer. And if I accept him in my life as that, the Bible says, out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speaketh. My mouth will speaketh. If I believe that, my mouth will speak these words. Jesus, you are my healer. You are my savior. You are my miracle worker. Now look at me, congregation, because all three of those things I said to you is a free gift to the church. It's already been set and put in the church. It is written in God's eternal word. It's a gift to the church, a gift, a free gift, a free gift. You don't have to pay for it. A free gift. Glory to God forevermore. I'm telling you, this fellow with a blue shirt is getting blessed and not from heaven. I mean, he's one of these cases is getting blessed. I guarantee you he's glad he came to church tonight. Makes me jealous. I like to get blessed like that. I'm telling you, God moved on him about 20 minutes ago and hadn't let go yet. Lord God, thank you, Lord. Bless him. Now, you saw God shake him, right? You saw God bless him for 20 minutes, right? Now, those saying, now listen, congregation. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't tell him to say anything. Did I tell him to say anything? Now listen to what he said on his own. Those same words you just said, say them one more time. I said when you was up there talking, you was getting ready to call people down, my heart was hurting. Real bad. It's been hurting bad all day. It's been hurting real bad. In fact, it scared me. About 2 o'clock this afternoon, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I told one of my workers, I said, my heart is hurting me real bad. About 30 minutes later, it got to feeling better. But during the service tonight, my heart just got to hurting and hurting. While I go, while I was praying, I just felt the spirit of the Lord come over me. My heart started pounding in my chest, just boom, 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 boom. Just could feel it booming, and it's yeah, there's just like a fire in there. It's hot. It's, there's just a heat inside my chest. I don't feel any pain. There is no pain. I just feel nothing but good. No pain. He said, "I feel no pain. There is no pain. My heart is healed. There is no pain. It's gone." It's gone, it's gone. Well, the fire of God burn it out. Go ahead, uh, God forever. The fire of the Lord. The healing power of the Lord. The miracle working power of God. The Holy Ghost. Go ahead to God forever. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of you people tonight has been blessed to the Lord. The ones on the floor, just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Just you and the altar that came for a new heart tonight. Just turn around. Don't, 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 don't go back, back to your seat right now. I need you for just a few seconds and I'll let you go. Turn around to the congregation. Stretch your hand out to them. Now, everybody in the congregation, sit down. Now, you in the congregation that needs any kind of a miracle, stand to your feet. Any kind of a miracle. Now, then you in the altar that's received the peace of God and the miracle working power of God tonight, begin to say with your mouth, say it ten times, receive your miracle. In Jesus' name, receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. 
Start ministering right now, see. Don't wait till next month to go to, have to, have to go to a Bible co- college. Start ministering right now. The Lord has touched me. I have a new heart. Receive your miracle from God. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Now then, congregation, all of you standing up, turn your face toward heaven. Hold up your hands to heaven. Now about ten times, thank God out loud for your miracle. 